Welcome to another show of Celebrate Life. My name is Gary DeCarlis, and I am your host. The focus of this series is to show the amazing lives that people live and are living. The key word here is live. Everyone has a story to tell, and all stories are worth celebrating. Over the years, I have read too many obituaries that left me pondering, why did I not have a chance to meet this person while they were alive? The goal of this program is to celebrate the lives of everyday Vermonters, who are all very much alive. If you would like to be interviewed for the show or know someone who you think would like to be interviewed, please contact me at celebratelife0747 at gmail.com. Now I'd like to introduce you to Diana Carlisle. Welcome, Diana. Thank you. Good to have you here on the show. Thanks. So where we want to celebrate your life today, and where would you like to begin? <laughs> Oh boy, uh, well, in the moment, it's a wonderful life today. <laughs> That's good to hear. Uh, yeah, I'm in great health. Um, I love living in Burlington. Um, things are going, um, in my life anyway, pretty well. That's great. Um, uh, where did you start? Where, did, where were you born? Yeah, well, my family is from outside of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. My parents met in high school and married later uh, after college, or a college age. And um, uh, they were both from big families, one, was, one of six and one of seven. Mm. So it was a wonderful, and I was about the oldest, the oldest daughter of my, my parents and the oldest granddaughter, so that I was surrounded with a lot of aunts and uncles who were kind of young mm. and there was just always activity, people going out the door, they're playing in a football game, they're meeting somebody at the train, um, there's a big family dinner. Um, it mm. was just a, a rich environment. really rich environment. Mm. And of course being the first, I, I felt the adoration yes. <laughs> and the love yes. uh, at this new little life and this new little kid. Aww. And so that was really a very special growing up. Um, and then um, my mother was uh, in, uh, had been in college and had to drop out during the Depression. Mm. And I think that um, I feel like my life is sort of reflective of the world history. They were struggling in the Depression. They got married. I was born. My father was a pilot trained in the Army Air Corps, mm. but had to leave the U.S. Army National Guard because the government ran out of money. Hmm. And they said, you have to go home, join your local Pennsylvania National Guard, get a job. We can't pay you. Wow. So he was struggling. My mom was a legal secretary. She was earning money. And then, and they weren't living together when they first married because they couldn't afford it. And then I was born and my sister was born. And then shortly after, or a little while after that, um, the World War II was happening in Europe, which of course, oh. we, I had no yeah. It was too little. Yeah. But anyway, my father abruptly took advantage of a extreme emergency need for pilots mm. by the government of Britain through Canada to the Battle of, of London. The Blitz wow. was going on. Wow. And the United States, although they weren't in the war, was supplying through Lend-Lease airplanes. Yep. And somebody needed to fly those airplanes from America or Canada over to Britain. Wow, and he did that. And my dad heard an advertisement on the radio. If you have these skills, we need you. Wow. Call this number, very clandestine. Mm -hmm. Went to New York, they sent him up to Canada. He passed, of course, the flying tests. And he went home, he said to my mother, we're moving to Montreal right now. Wow. So, I mean, what a earthquake for me. I bet. And for my From mother. all that family to a whole new country, yeah. new city. Yeah. So he went right away and, and, and in the fall my mom packed us up, took care of the house. They did have a little house and um, uh, rented it and uh, off we went to Montreal oh and leaving all that wonderful family behind. Wow. Very difficult. Yes, Very I difficult. Imagine. But she was great. She, we didn't see my father that much. He would go and come and go and come. And uh, she was very good at uh, keeping us calm and keeping things routine. And mm. when he came home, of course, during it, between, it was a joyous time. Mm. We would walk up to the top of Mount Royal. We would mm. walk in the woods. And that's part of my love of nature. And mm. 
you know, being with my father and observing the plants and the animals, and that was given to me by him. But uh, mm -hmm. again, so um, I started first grade there, and um, we lived in an apartment. My mom went to work at the RAF uh, office so that she could know where he was. Wow. Wow. <laughs> because they weren't it was all secret and then wow. she didn't know where he was so I wouldn't know but she 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 had the skills and she went and um, so uh, she got a governess for us wow. governess put her put a white uniform on her and, yeah. and there she was and so did how about the language issue French English how did that how did well you it was all that's interesting because she chose to live in Outremont and Outremont was the French speaking and all of the friends, British and Americans, said, oh, you have to live in Westmount. Oh, nobody lives in Outremont. You know, mm. you live in Westmount. That's where we all live. Mm. But no, she just saw something there she wanted. <laughs> and she moved, she got an apartment in Outremont. So uh, French was started in third grade. We didn't have any of that French, English fight or language issues. However, <laughs> it was very clear that the French kids bullied us. Oh. <laughs> they'd push us into the snowbank. Oh. You know, but we'd walk to school, we'd walk home for lunch, we'd walk to school. But yeah, I don't it's just part of life. I don't mm. know. The crazy guy crazy kids, you know. Mm -hmm. Ah, who mm -hmm. cares? <laughs> so because you were American or because you spoke only spoke English? Spoke English. Oh. oh, they didn't know that I was American. Yeah, they didn't yeah. care. Yeah. That was just English it was English French. Okay. It was just kind it was of that, a that thing. thing. Yeah. Uh, who knows, yep, you know, yep. so anyway, so that's what happened. And I started school and I loved school. Hmm. And um, and I did I did well. Um, uh, my mother got a little note saying Diana's having trouble with her letters. And she said, oh dear, she went to talk to the teacher and came home and at the end of the year, <laughs> she got this little note saying, Diana has been awarded the first proficiency medal. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Hey, wow. Oh, really? Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, well, just, that's just the way it was. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that Aww. sort of started me, and I love. You loved, have it. I, oh, you gee, have it. I, I got one for, I missed the third grade, but all the other <laughs> grades we left in the fifth. Uh -huh. And she framed them with a little purple, Aww. you know, Mom, she yeah, framed yeah. them in a little purple thing. And then I also, much to our surprise, was running, all the classes had to run in a race in Outremont every year. And uh, this is, uh, yeah, there, see what, how old I was in that one. And I just ran my little legs off. I love to run, I love athletics. And wow. they told me, oh, you won a couple races, you have to come back tomorrow. Wow. So I came back tomorrow and ran the final race, and my gosh, if I didn't win that. <laughs> I That's said, what fantastic. Is this? I mean, you know, so these are the serendipitous things that you don't plan for, but they sort of... They, they put an exclamation point on your life at that point, right? <laughs> and they right? give you a certain amount of yeah. confidence, and you say, oh, I can do that well. That's fantastic. And I enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. So that was what... I joined the Brownie Troop, and the, then I, I took myself to church. Mom didn't go to church. Father didn't go to church. I took myself to church huh. because I think I was lonely, and it was a sense of community in my Sunday school and my Brownie. Mm. I was, we were really, I was really missing my big family. Yes. It was That tough. had to be tough. I, when I look back on it, it was, yeah. it was such a shock. Did they ever come up to visit? No, they never came up to visit. Uh, it was wartime, but we did go down on the train a couple times. Okay. There was, we couldn't fly, but we went on the train a couple times, definitely. Yep. And, uh, and, and, and so that, and, and they sent packages of mittens and scarves and notes and, you know, they they just made us feel like mm. we were still part of it. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, so that was, but you know, that's kind of life. The world gets into a war, you get someplace and your life changes and yep. you yep. roll with it. As a little girl, did you have, um, when I grow up, I want to be dot, dot, dot. Any thoughts about what you Not want to do? Thing. <laughs> you were relishing in being a child. <laughs> yeah, I was just relishing school. I, yeah. I, I know I, you know, I can't really think. I knew I didn't want to be a nurse. I, I mean, I wasn't going to be anything to do with blood and that stuff. But um, <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I just really never had, okay. never had uh, 
big dreams yeah. like that. I just sort of yeah. did what I was doing. And you moved after a couple of years. We moved when, yes, when the war ended in 1945. Mm. Um, uh, my parents did not want to go back to Philly. Mm. I think they'd gotten a taste of independence. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I love the big family. There is a downside to the big family. <laughs> and knowing Lillian and Grafton, <laughs> my mother and my father, yeah. they were liking to be where they were. Sure. In All the home. obligations that go along with family. I think right? you're right. We yeah. took every Sunday during my growing up, we would go to one or the other grandma for those big Sunday dinners, right. which I loved. But probably they would have been liking to do. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Exactly. They they decide, and they liked the North Country. Mm. They, they loved the weather. They loved the mountains. Mm. They would go skiing in Saint Laurent or whatever it is up there. I mm -hmm. can't remember where this, uh, in Canada, they took up skiing. Nice. So they came back over. And when the war was over, even though my father had been awarded, the OBE, Order of British Empire, the first American to be the, oh, the first really? American to be or, uh, awarded the medal by the king um, in 1941 or two. Wow. Um, he was uh, because he had been one of the first people to 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 take these chances. Yeah. Um, they still said to him, "We have too many boys coming home that need work. You are still an American citizen." Hmm. You have to go home. Hmm. Wow. So they went across the border, yeah. and they looked at Malone, New York, and they looked at Burlington, Vermont. Not even a, <laughs> not even a competition. <laughs> and they loved the lake, they liked the mountain, they liked the university, and they liked the hospital. Mm. And um, they moved. They moved. Yeah. My dad didn't have a job. He just moved. He knew oh. it was where he wanted to be. Yeah. Um, and he, uh, so, um, and they moved to Mayfair Park, okay. which was just South new, Burlington. just yeah. new, no trees, nothing. It was a big open field and such a change from Montreal in the apartment oh where I just go down the alley and see all these kids. Right. Here I was out, You've not, not too happy. <laughs> dramatic changes here. <laughs> yes. Very dramatic. So anyway, um, uh, we adjusted, but I, I wasn't that great, happy about it. Um, I was going to say something about that that was, uh, oh, my dad got a job pretty soon after he came. You know, they used to run the ticker tape across to watch the stock. You're too young yes. to know. They used to, right. at Kidder and Peabody or whatever the heck it was named, the men would sit around and watch, mostly men, sit around and watch the ticker tape. And my mm. dad loved to, loved to um, trade stocks. That's yes. what he was doing. Okay. And so he sat there and he got to meet some people. And before he knew it, Somebody at the Merchants Bank said to him, we'd like to hire you. Hmm. So he was a trust officer at the Merchants Bank. Wow. And um, then the Howard Bank later picked him up, and he yep. was at the Howard Bank, a VP and head of the... So it worked out, but he took a chance, but he had made some money in the war. Yeah. He'd been paid well. I would think so, given what he did, mm -hmm. yeah. So that was that's what happened. Wow. He took a chance, and, he, and it worked out. He knew where he wanted to be. Right. Burlington. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. And that's that was it. I mean, you lived in Burlington for ever at growing up. That was that was the last stop on the Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. Oh no, right. we were here. With you. No, um ironically about Mayfair Park, I kept saying, Oh, I'd like to live in Burlington where my friends are, my church friends are and my other friends are and a neighborhood it was a neighborhood but it wasn't too yeah. many people. And so, oh no, they liked my dad liked to grow things. But funny, ten years later, after I left, as I left, they moved to Lakeview Terrace. <laughs> no kidding. They wanted to be in the city, they wanted a yep. neighborhood, they wanted to give up a car. Yep. <laughs> So he but could walk to work from he there, could walk no to problem. Work. My yep. mother was working for Mrs. Webb at the Shelburne Museum. Wow. Very happy with that. Wow. That was a beautiful, beautiful opportunity. Yeah. Uh, such a, a rich, rich part of all of our lives. Wow. So, yeah, so I went to Burlington High School. You did go to Burlington High School? Yeah. Edmonds. It was back in the old Oh, Edmonds. that's right. Edmonds mm -hmm. on Main Street mm -hmm. there. Yep. And uh, I sang in the choir. The choir, the church was very important to me. I will say it was my family away. Mm. It was a community and it was a family and beautiful people there. And 
um, uh, I don't know what I believed. I just believed that this was love and care and support and fun and youth group and singing. and. You sought that out as a little girl <laughs> on your own in Montreal. I know. And so, yes, yeah, so you carried that on yeah. when you got the Mom went church shopping and she went to the first congregational church and she saw the little the choir and uh, they mm. came up to her and said, oh, you've got two little girls. Do they sing? Yes. Is there an alto? Me. Is there a soprano? My sister. And that was it. <laughs> so I, I'm sure there's, it would have been uh, fine any place, but it was a very, very rich, important uh, part of my life because I didn't have my extended family. Right, right. So exactly. I was grateful for that. So you graduated from Burlington High School. I did. And then what? Well, I wanted to study French. I had had French up in Canada. Mm. Mother gave us private lessons. We all went, Mother, Penny, and me, as well as school. Mm. So I had some background in French, and I loved it. And so I thought I'd study French. And I don't remember if, any, if we even had a guidance counselor. All I knew, uh, my friends were all going to UVM. And I thought, that's great. I'll go to UVM. My mother said, you know, you want to study French? There is a college down the road oh, that specializes yes. in, she didn't know it, they do everything as well as languages, but mm -hmm. she said, it's a good language program, let's go look at it. Sure. I must say, that was the way things were. <laughs> Mom, Dad said something and it was fine with me. I mean, I had my own ideas, but it always clicked with me. Yeah. And maybe she was listening to me. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, um, we went down and, and, and interviewed at Middlebury. And the woman said, oh, well, where have you? See, I'm diverging, but she said, well, where have you applied? Uh, I shouldn't say this about Middlebury. I said, oh, to UVM. And she said, oh, my dear, you may not get in to Middlebury. <laughs> I said, I'll take my chances. I'll go to UVM. And I got it. Of course, I okay. was accepted. Yeah. I was a good student. And, and that was one of the key moments in my life. Wow. Key moments just expanded my world just again. Opened you up again. Wow. Opened my world. Stretched me. Oh, my gosh. I remember sitting for the literature, the English test, the first week. If you think you can skip basic English, sit for the test. I looked at the questions and I said, <laughs> what's that? Who's that? <laughs> Closed the book, turned it in. I said, I think I need the first year English class. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, there were people from all over the country and, and right. very, anyway, that was the begin. That was the, the wake up call. Mm. You're not in Kansas City anymore. You're mm. gonna really have to work hard, right. which I really did. Wow. But it was a wonderful experience. Oh, that's good. Um, academically, you were a French major? <laughs> Another story. <laughs> I was going to be a French major, and it came sophomore year. You had to declare your major, and I was taking a French class with the head of the French department. Um, I had taken a conversational class the first year, and I declared, I told her that I wanted to major in French, and she said, no, 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 no. You cannot. You are too far behind. Wow. I said, it can't be. I'm going to major in French. No, 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 no. You had conversation last year. You missed all your verbs, nouns, whatever. Oh, my goodness. And there's so many people that want to major in French. She didn't say that, but that's, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. She said, you are too far behind. So I walked out of the building in tears. I didn't I know what imagine. to do. <clears throat> well, here's another part of the story. Walking toward me on the path was my mother, Lillian. Talk about serendipity. Wow. She had been in Middlebury for a business trip for Mrs. Webb, and she decided to stop in. And I saw her coming up the path, and I ran to her, and she said, what's the matter? And I said, I can't major in French. I don't know what to do. She calmed me down. We went and we talked. She said, OK, you just go to your advisor, and you mm -hmm. talk about what other options there are. And I ended up majoring in history, which yeah. I'm grateful You're for. You're grateful for. Isn't that something? But I mean, you know, talk about having a plan. Wow. Sometimes yeah. it's not so, <laughs> your exactly. plans don't always come exactly. through. You have to pivot. <laughs> yes, and you did. I did. And your mother must have known something too about you. That was, I mean, you can look at that and say, hmm, <laughs> you know, that is too weird. Your guardian angel. Too weird, because she something? didn't, they didn't telephone, they didn't visit. I mean, in those days, it was in parentis locus. When you went to school, yep. 
you, they were your parent. Yep, yep, exactly. So, wow. and that's the way she was anyway. She was doing her thing, I was doing my thing. Right, wow. <laughs> but I know she loved me and all, but she, anyway, so it, you know, as so many things do in life, it may not have been what you expected, but it, it worked out. Yeah, yeah. And I love history. You love his, uh, yes, and we'll we'll talk about that history love too. Mm. And so you, um, it was a rich four years in Middlebury. It sounds like it was a rich. It was challenging, very mm -hmm. challenging. But the people that I met, uh, the experiences that I had, um, uh, just the this, just the, uh, uh, and some of the extracurricular things that I did uh, were. Uh, I was I was editor of the Winter Carnival program, hmm. which I think you know it's another thing I think about life. It may not be the education and the classes; it's the work you do. It may be the summer work, maybe the extra projects that you do that give yes. you experiences yes. and skills yes. that are so valuable. Wow! That's... So so that's the way it was, and I'm. One good thing about that same sophomore year, <laughs> I had had met. My a boyfriend, a boy, okay. <laughs> and um, uh, and and we started to go out, and we were uh, uh, sweethearts for the rest of our college. He graduated a year ahead of me, I graduated, and then um, we got engaged, and oh, right. we were married. He was in the had to go into the army. I went down to Connecticut and got a job teaching, and uh, near his home, mm. knowing that we would be living mm -hmm. there because he was going into a family business. Mm. So okay. that sort of, I would have liked to have gone into business, but again, Lily and my mother said, you're gonna get married, you're gonna have children, you better do something that you can do now, and then you can come back to, or whatever, what is it, education, you're great with children. So I did it, and as usual, she was sort of right, and I've come back to business, but anyway, so my, my life was, it, I didn't have, I didn't have what so many of the kids have today, which is what do I do now, the uncertainty. Right, right. I could, we just got married then. You, you know, it's... it's and started not, a family and... Yeah, you know. And, uh, you know, I'll be very honest, there, you know, you got married, you were gonna have children. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what happened. And we had three little girls, right? Uh -huh. uh, went to, uh, and and adored our three girls and and uh, so uh, we had a sweet little house, old house that we fixed over and fruit trees and gardens and we hiked and camped and mm. had again his family was nearby, uh, which was a, always part of our life. Mm. And I did some substitute teaching, but I was mostly. At first, I wasn't doing too much in that little house. The children were young, yep, yep. very young. I had three of them in four plus years, four and a half years, and I liked it. That was what mm -hmm. I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I did it. Where are those little kids today? Uh, well, um, uh, uh, Elizabeth is the oldest, and two. Well, actually, two of them are in Sun Valley, Idaho. Haley, Sun Valley, Idaho. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, we started them skiing, and Amy. The youngest uh, who went to UVM went out to uh, got a job out in Utah and then uh, in Sun Valley teaching French of all things. <laughs> yes, and then and Elizabeth um, was one of the first uh, girls who were given a scholarship to go to Andover Academy in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. She's very smart, and I met somebody in the, at a summer at a summer school I was taking. I got my master's one summer, mm -hmm. uh, several summers, and they said we're looking. We're going co-ed. We're looking for smart women, and I said, well, he said, do you have any smart women? <laughs> <laughs> Just happened to have a. Few. <laughs> Just happened to have a smart sophomore in school. He said, oh, we'd love to talk to her. So. They talked to her, and uh, we, she wasn't quite ready, and we, we didn't know what this was all about. Ted was chairman of the Board of Education, as a matter of fact, at wow. the moment, so it was a little tricky. Um, and anyway, uh, the next year she said, I'm ready to go to private school. So she did, and she got a superior education and a mm. different kind of life than she would have had. Mm. And uh, she went to Georgetown, and she ended up in New York City. The mm. second one is Susan is in San Diego, 
California. Hmm. And uh, she is, um, uh, she, she was very successful. She was, she was a businesswoman and she worked for a health insurance. She, anyway, she did well. And um, now she runs marathons. Wow. <laughs> all over the world wow. at Tokyo she just and so wow. uh, and and and, and, um, uh, and she's also a, a wonderful um, designer of homes and she, she not flips but she fixes up homes uh -huh. um, and she loves to do that she's very creative and then um, my third one Amy was our little free spirit and uh, she went out skiing and um, came to UVM when and then went out skiing she teaches French um, she's still in Haley, Idaho, and I've just come back from her marriage. Mm -hmm. She married for the second time last two weeks ago. Oh, nice. Retired from teaching. Uh -huh. um, and that's another thing. COVID really, really, really um, hurt. Uh, I don't know what the right word is. The teachers and the students. Oh, yes. Yeah. And it changed everything. It's a middle school and and it was just out of control and the whole school tried to get things back and french is not french and spanish and you know mm. you had to take three years of it and some of the students wanted it some of them didn't and it was very taxing on amy and um so she gave that up this year but and she re, she got married to a wonderful guy oh, nice. and so uh i guess, i think she'll come back to to burlington at some point that's great so those are my three girls wow and i got grandchildren so I don't see them. You were in Connecticut, and yet it, it sounds like your children, Bur uh, Vermont and Burlington, w was like a magnet pulling them here, too, right? It sure was. Yeah. They loved to visit Lillian and Grafton. Mm. Um, they loved Lakeview Terrace. Um, mm. And you know what else they loved? The Champlain Fair. <laughs> the 10 best days the of summer. The 10 best days of summer. They could not wait. Oh. to come up for the fair. Oh, isn't and, that great? Yeah, my sister had three children too and we would all meet up here for the fair. And Lillian worked at the P PR for the fair for a number of years. So she had a lot of free tickets and, and she just loved to have us all come. So um, yeah, it was, and the, they started to ski and um, they liked the neighborhood. The kids were kind of quirky and they, mm -hmm. when they came to Lakeview Terrace, they you know, meet all right these around. interesting little kids. Yeah, yeah. It, it was, and 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 it was just. Uh, we like Connecticut. Uh, Connecticut was wonderful, but there was something special when we'd cross the line mm. on the interstate. Oh, and we came as the interstates were being developed, and we'd cross the line, and it was like, so different. Hmm. We were in Vermont, mm. and at first sometimes we'd see deer. You never saw deer. Now we see them in our backyards in Connecticut, and you can't <laughs> grow daylilies. But right. um, anyway, yeah, it was really important. Wow, that's very nice. Yeah. Um, you want to talk a little bit about your mom? I know she played a big part in your life, mm -hmm. and, and in Burlington life, she was bigger than life in some ways. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anything you want to say about her? Uh, uh, sure. Um, well, she was, I mean, what's not to love and admire and you can't pick your mother, but I'd pick her any time. <laughs> <laughs> you won the lottery of life. <laughs> I did. Um, she was, um, such a giver back and such a worker and so organized and such a believer in becoming involved and engaged if you want to make the world a better place. Mm and you want things to be right and you want to help your fellow neighbor and 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 my father too was very active in town he was involved in the music festivals oh. um yes he was started one of the people that got going with the community gardens early mm. um and i'm sure he did some other things too but both of them he more quietly in the background he had had his star time during the war yeah and he was so glad to come home to come home mm -hmm. and be alive to uh, be alive uh, have a family he didn't want to travel he said Lillian travel yeah and she went with the church groups and all and I I got I, I traveled a little bit too when I was in college but anyway um, so she um, she also had to do her own thing and that was a good 
example for me. Mm. Father was in the war, and he wasn't. He was doing his own thing even when he was not in the war. He, he, he loved. Had a great love relationship, but um, he was doing his thing. And uh, even when they were dating, if she wanted to go to a dance, he'd say. Oh, Bill wants to take you to the dance. That's fine. Go to the dance. I don't want to go to the dance. <laughs> <laughs> and as she said, I don't know what it was about him, but he was something special. <laughs> <laughs> but so, yeah, no, yeah. she, um, you know, um, what else can I say about her? Um, she wasn't a, what do they call them these days, a parachute mom where you watch over your kids? Oh, uh-huh. Parachute. She did not. Once I went out of the house, that was it. And even in high school, yeah, she had seen her mother be saddled with some mm. of the children mm. of Ella, mom's sisters' brothers, um, which wasn't really fair to her. Mm-hmm. And so she, mom didn't want to be too, too protective or. Kind of, yeah, controlling. Yeah, she, yeah, yeah, controlling, or she didn't want you to feel that this was going to be your place forever. Yeah, okay. Your your job was to find your way. Mm-hmm. The support, the confidence was there, but, um, and, 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 and while, while, and on the other hand, she wasn't a warm and fuzzy mother, too. I will be very honest about that. She wasn't. It was a loving, but it was a very, kind of a, f- yeah, I don't know, more formal love. I can't exactly. Uh, whereas <laughs> when I married my husband, <laughs> his family was all over me and oh, all yes. over us. <laughs> I had a little hard time getting used to that. <laughs> and we were, I think, more uh, demonstrative to our children. But um, that's just the way she was. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, so what else can I say? Um, yeah. Um, no, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm and, trying to think. She was, I, I did go through a very hard time when my first husband and I split, um, mm. when the girls were in college, and um, we were just going different directions, not really want to even talk about it. And um, uh, all of a sudden, it just became clear that we needed to be finding out who we were. Yeah, yeah, apart from each other, yeah. Yeah, and... Mother and father, bless them, were devastated mm-hmm. uh, because they adored Ted and and uh, the family, and I was a great little family. Um, but whatever it was, and I was whatever it was, they would support me. Mm-hmm. And my father and mother made it very clear, and they could even understand our dis- the disappointments we may have had in Ted and his career and me and some other things uh, in something that I was I was not happy doing what I was doing mm-hmm. but it was exactly the right the right way to let me be and make my way yep yeah and I became a different person yep wow so for that I'm eternally grateful right. so there you always had support from always. them, and, and you knew that you were loved and all that, mm-hmm. and at the same time, they they trusted you enough to know you would do right by yourself. Mm-hmm. You would figure out. And that it was out. even in high school; they yeah. trusted me. Yeah. No big lot of rules or anything. If you're going to be late, just call me. Yeah. You know, so that was. Yeah. And and I think you know, if you're talking about your my life, a life, celebrate life. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a, a horrible uh, time for me because I had gone from my parents to my husband never been on my own Mm. but it was uh when i saw the support i was getting from women friends that i who we it was just the time when people were acknowledging that maybe the original family was not going to be forever yeah and i found all sorts of support from women who yeah said it's so hard but you'll be glad you did it yeah or it will work out. Yes. And and after about six months, my life just opened up. I cannot tell you the joy. The joys that I was finding, and it was such a surprise. Mm. Uh, it was a rebirth. I, mm. I really think that. And uh, so that was, I celebrate that. Mm, absolutely. 
That's happened a few times in your life when you went to Middlebury. That was an opening up for you. <laughs> and then your transition from your married life to mm -hmm. having your own life right. is another, yes. Yeah, and I transitioned also from my profession of, of school. I was a teacher, then I was an administrator for a career internship program, which I absolutely loved. But every time my children were out of the house, we had an empty nest, and I was like, I was done with dealing with kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Guidance counseling, <laughs> internship counseling, uh uh. I've been yeah. there, done that. <laughs> and so I wanted to leave, but I didn't want to leave because I didn't want to break up the fat. Uh, you know, so when yeah. we split, when we, we separated for two years before we acknowledged and divorced. Yep. And at that point, after a month, I came home and I told my parents. I'm going to take a leave of absence from school because I may not want to go back. And of course, my mother said, you've got tenure. You're all by yourself. You're alone now. I said, yes. Mm -hmm. And I did it. And after a year, the leave of absence, they said, come back to your old job. And I said, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I said, I had a taste of the world of mm -hmm. work. I like it. I think I found a job that I like, and I'm going to leave. Mm -hmm. And that again was was uh, yes. change. Yes. What did you choose? Well, I um, I chose to. Um, I worked in retail a little bit at first, uh, but I knew that wasn't. A, and then, so I went, I went to some interviews, and I thought I'll go to a personnel agency and I'll see what they have and I'll see how they can help me. And I was having lunch one day on the, uh, at a restaurant on the side of the road, and I was headed north to, and, and I sat beside a man, and he said, "Oh, you're all dressed up. You, where do you work?" And I said, "Oh, I'm going for a job interview. I'm going up to this place." And he said, "No, no, no." <laughs> you want to turn? No, he said that. He said you want to go to the agencies in Fairfield County, outside of New York. Oh. You will have more opportunity. <laughs> I said, really? I mean, I guess I knew it, but I hadn't really yeah. thought about it. He yeah, said, yeah. yes. Turn around, and he go said, south. here's <laughs> here's a place to go. It's a woman-owned personnel company that is hires for all of the many of the companies in the Fairfield County, lower Fairfield County area. So I did, I turned my car around, I went in, I talked <laughs> with her, I talked with somebody and they said, we don't really know what to do with you. You're coming out of education and you wanna go into business. Let me get the boss. And she came out and she met me, talk about a lantern and she was so smart. She said, how about if you come and work with us? Wow. <laughs> she said, you've got the, Counseling skills. Yes, you've worked with women. Yep. You've worked with women. I was head of the League of Women Voters, and I had worked with a lot of women, and I saw their talent, mm. and I wanted to help them, but I needed money, so that's why I went back to education. Mm. Anyway, she said, "Would you come work with us?" Wow. And I said, "Well, place me in a job first. Mm -hmm. So she placed me in a job, and I did it for about two months, and and it was okay. But then, I said. Uh, the company was not doing well and I came back and she said, okay, now? <laughs> <laughs> and I did and I caught the brass ring. I just, it was the beginning of 85, 86 and things were booming. Mm. And I just had the best time. No kidding. And I was able to support myself. Well, I was, I still had my house. Uh -huh. Ted, Ted. Yep. I was well, well off and uh, well taken care of, let me put it that way. So anyway, and then, um, so that's what I did, and, and I was making good money, but I was having fun. Mm -hmm. I was talking with the different companies. I had five mm. companies that were hiring so many people that the HR didn't have time enough, so they just gave me all their openings, and I interviewed people and arranged and I matched and it was just wow. and I made money. <laughs> wow, right. <laughs> so wow. that's sort of what happened. And then um, about that time I said okay I'd been doing the single scene and I'm really sharing because I loved kind of the meeting a lot of people mm. but 
I said, okay, I'm going to give all that up and I'm going to come home and I'm just going to concentrate on this new job and uh, so forth and so on. And anyway, um, and in, um, I don't, do you want me to keep going yeah, on yeah, this? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> so I, I had a friend in Burlington, in Newtown, who was also getting divorced, and he said to me, we don't know how to be single. We don't know this life. We don't know what's going on. I need to start a singles journal. A singles journal? Yeah. Like a, like a newspaper? Yeah, like a newspaper. Huh. Restaurants, travel, oh, and it's okay. got to have a personals because we got to meet people. <laughs> he said, you got to write a personal. I said, I, no, I don't want to write a personal. <laughs> and he said, I'll write one for you. So he wrote one for me a couple times. And I was I was meeting a few people. Most of them were just telephone people. Yep. Um, and uh, and But I, I was enjoying it, uh -huh. you know, finding a lot You're of people. Fun. Anyway, all of a sudden on um, New Year's Eve, I got a call. Uh, uh, not a call. I got a letter. That's how you did it. He matched, sent oh, you yeah. a letter from people that had responded, and it said, um, uh, "I'm sitting here after Christmas, and I'm reading uh, this, and I want to tell. I want to see if there, see if you. I want to tell you a little bit about myself." And he told me about himself and included a picture. And I said, "Well, that's very nice." I put it aside, and and I said, "But I'm not." I'm not doing that anymore. So, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, two weeks later, I was cleaning it up and I saw it and I said, geez, I at least should call this guy. So I called this thing and he said, what took you so long? <laughs> 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 he said, I said, you wrote more than one letter. He said, yes, I did. He said, I wrote four. He said, the first one, I said, the first one was generic. He said, yes. The second one was specific to you. Oh. So he said, let's meet. Can you come out tonight for a glass? No, I can't do that. I'm starting a new job, blah, 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 blah. But he is a salesman and he wore me down. He said, okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> and we finally met. I just was a nice guy. I enjoyed him and we had a nice talk and we found so many things in common, such as his kids and my kids had both sent us on outward bound tour uh, experiences as we transitioned and grieved, if you will, yep. and all that stuff, and tried to figure out who we were going to be. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and so he said, you will not guess what I did that first summer. I said, no, you will not guess what I did that first summer. <laughs> so, I mean, we couldn't, and we a, just looked at each other. Isn't and, that something? And so, uh, I, you know, it was, uh, he was a little older than I was, and he was a little, I could tell he was a little more conservative than I was. Mm -hmm. And I said, mm, I don't know, but uh, he, being the salesman, he said, well, I live on the Appalachian Trail. Do you like to hike? Well, come on up, we'll hike on set. The rest is history. Right. So um, it was, I decided, okay, my life is changing. Let's go with him. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> We've got so many things in common. <laughs> he loves to travel. He loves yep. music. He loves family. He likes hiking. Um, just a lot of things yep. that 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 we're. Vi he's smart. He reads. He. Mm. We just could have a lo mm. lovely life together. And and at that time, I'm just babbling on here. But at that time, conservative versus not conservative, were not so far apart. Yeah. Yeah. We had a couple issues that he was Catholic, mm -hmm. and we had a couple issues that were, were very important to me that he, that we weren't in agreement with, mm -hmm. and I didn't know if I could live with them. Mm -hmm. So we went to counseling, and we agreed that, and his his daughter had worked on, my, on him a little bit in those lines anyway, and said, Dad, when are you going to get with it? <laughs> so <laughs> I knew I had an ally. <laughs> But um, uh, it, 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 it worked. It worked. And we started to uh, travel and we started to just have a good time. And, That's great. and um, uh, so uh, anyway, that uh, we were going to move to Burlington. Hmm. My dad had Alzheimer's and my mom was, work, was caring for him and then she decided he better go to Birchwood and I thought that we'd come up in the summer and I'd come up and spend it with her and then we'd move up here. Yeah. So I came up in the summer and actually that's when I took the course that I now has the story of the Champlain Glass Company. Oh. I did that just to do something in my oh. field with Tom Visser. Wow. At Historic Preservation right. while I was with her and while I was helping with my dad, while I was trying to find out if Burlington was where I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. And so um, Jim still had his business 
and he we were in Connecticut. He was oh, we ha I still had my house, but I sold my house the next year. I decided not to come to Burlington. Hmm. My dad died. Well, no, I ju it just wasn't the time for me. Right. I spent six months here, yep. and there was too much going on back in Connecticut. The yep. kids were getting engaged, <clears throat> and friends were having birthday parties, and Jim still had his job, and I just said, it's not time. Yeah. Mother was doing okay once father went to Birchwood. Yep. And then he, father died in 94, mm. and, and we did not move back. Okay. We sold our house that year. We did not move back until mother was 90, and then she said, I need somebody nearer. Oh. We came back. That, okay. But during that time, uh, we traveled all over the world. Wow. So wonderful. Wow. And I met wonderful people through my new job, and I met his, some of his friends, became my best friend, our best friends, and we spent a month in Anguilla, the little a Caribbean island, yep. through my company, through my, my, my best friend, through the new, my new job. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and we just, mm. life was good. Mm. Sounds wonderful. So anyway. Um, so you did get married to this salesman. Well, that's interesting. I did, yes. At first I didn't see any point in it, but <laughs> being a, having a Catholic background, and you know, let's face it, well, I won't go into that. <laughs> They want to nail things down. <laughs> they, we're, we're together. It has to be, you know, I want it to be marriage, uh -huh. marriage. Uh -huh. And um, so uh, I, got, I got it. Uh, yeah. And he was right. And yeah. he was right. And um, so we had a good time. And uh, uh, we did a lot of sh traveling. And then the recession hit in 90. <clears throat> the stock market of, <coughs> again, world events. Yep, yep. <clears throat> I was doing so well, and then um, the stock market crash of 87, by 1990, four out of the five companies that I was working with had gone out of business. Oh my goodness. One by one by wow. one. Wow. Mm -hmm. So our personnel person said, you can keep working, I can't give you a, a, any <clears throat> whatever she gave us base commission, but yeah. I, and I can't pay your, your health and the companies aren't there, but if you want to come in. So I came in a little bit and worked a little bit, but we were so busy traveling. I got married in 89, and then we started to really travel, and uh, and I started to slow back. And um, um, so I retired in 1995, I guess, completely. Mm. And, um, yeah, and we just, uh, I don't know what we did. I just, we. We spent a lot. Of, we came to Vermont a fair yeah. amount of time yeah. with mom. We enjoyed her. Yeah. We enjoyed Burlington, mm -hmm. and um, so then um, I guess that was about about it. And then um, uh, I don't. Uh, There's two things that I wanted yeah, to ask yeah. you about before we close. One is you mentioned the word lanterns. The, the different people were lanterns in your life. I'd like to hear more about that. And the second is your research around the the glass factory on, uh, I guess that would be Sherman Street, right? The it's corner on, of Sherman well, It was and on Battery. what they call Water Street, which is now Park Street. Right, right. On the corner, Sherman yeah. and Park. And Sherman used to be called Smith's Lane. Okay, so there you go. So it was there, right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, <clears throat> I love that term, lantern. I love it. I'm so glad you used it because I've seen it and it's, it sparked something in me too. Um, in thinking about it, and thank you, um, I can't say that there was anybody that really was a was a really super lantern for me, Maida. I would say that um, uh, uh, that a, a woman in <laughs> Montreal when I was eight years old who was a little Scottish woman, and she was in the church. And I think the reason I got into the church was she was also a brownie leader. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, um, she just sparked joy in me um, to do things, to learn things, the brownies, the little activities, the little crafts, the little things we learned and studied and did. And somehow um, she made me feel uh, a very, very happy and comfortable and active. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe took, I think now you made me, I sort of thought after you used that, maybe she reminded me of my grandmother. Oh, yeah. 
my grandmother Carlisle uh-huh. was a soup. Well, so was my grandmother Baker, but um, a very I a very adored. She had ended up with seventeen grandchildren, so uh, you know it wasn't as though she doted on me. Right, right. But um, uh, I always felt very special, mm. and she was a very accomplished woman. She was an artist as well as raising six children, as being a gourmet cook, a gardener, and just an all-around wonderful interesting bit irascible person <laughs> she had very strong opinions anyway um, uh, so maybe and and I think back and I think she was a very special part and 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 then she got me into the church mm-hmm. she invited mm-hmm. me into the church and I think that that probably was a very key thing in yeah. my life at that time yeah and maybe my when I went to teach school maybe that and then maybe Pat Kelly was her name, the woman that owned the personnel agency, yes. that she she was just a woman who could be on her own and do things, mm. and in, by example. Mm. Sure. Yep. And there's probably more, but yep. those are the ones that yep. come to mind. Okay. Tell us about the glass factory and your research and all mm-hmm, that. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, it's part of my curiosity, and it's also part of my respect for people who have gone before us who have shown such perseverance and 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 courage and entrepreneurship and doing something a little different to make a community grow or a family grow or whatever and somehow or other when i had to pick a topic I took a course in the summer um, with Tom Visser, and um, uh, and at the end of it, it was it was architectural. I had to pick a building material and study how it had altered or affected architectural styles. Hmm. And I said glass because I had seen how it had affected what we had done in Newtown with our rooms. Hmm. Yes. And so I yeah. came home and I said to mom, my mother, uh, I was living with my mother that summer. Um, I'm going to do a ta- I'm going to do glass. And she said, oh, do you know, there was a glass company in the old North End. I said, I have no idea. She said, well, David Blow and I, uh, for these books that they had written, did find that, that there was a glass company there. And we've always thought that would be a good topic. Mm. But she said, I'm not going to get to it. We don't, you know. So she said, you might want to look into that. So I said, that's my topic. Wow. And so I did do some research, a little bit of research, and I found yes, and I did, I did what I did, and then Tom Visser was very um, um, encouraging, and he said, "There's a story there, keep at it." Hmm. And t- tell the, you know, what's, what was the name of the glass company? The name of the glass company was the Champlain Glass Company, mm-hmm. and it was the first manufacturing enterprise in Burlington. Burlington was a farm community. This was 1827. Yep. And when the Champlain Canal opened, I think in 1822, yes. and then 1825, the Erie Canal opened, yes. instead of trading north to Montreal and Quebec, the trade was this way, New York, Chicago, well, that had a Buffalo, all those places were booming. Mm-hmm. And here was... Burlington, right on the lake, right. that could take advantage yep. um, if there were the right people and would take the chance. Exactly. So I went to the special collections and I said, by any chance, do you have anything on the Champlain Glass, Glass Company? She said, let me see. And a short while later, she came back with her arms laden <laughs> with books. Wow. The Smith family... Frederick Smith was the eventual owner. He started as a 15-year-old office apprentice and eventually became the owner. She said the Smith family has donated in the 1800s, so it was probably Charles Smith, who became quite a civic leader, Mm -hmm. his son, um, all the books from the Champlain Glass Company, the payrolls, the con- company store and what they traded, mm. and and the um, the 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 sales uh, list. Um, they started a canal boat. All of the tickets sold. Um, just a gold mine. Wow. 
And so I said, oh boy. Wow. So I did spend uh, several months and then I would come back and forth and keep doing the, in the research. Mm -hmm. And I turned it in uh, to Tom and, and he, I'd already turned in my paper, but I said, here's what I've got. So he said, and we kept at it a little bit. And then he said, I think you should send it to Vermont History Magazine. So I did. And they said, oh, it's quite interesting. We think we'll publish it. Well, years later, I mean, they really fine tooth it. You got to change this. You got to do this. You got to wow. do this. Their standards are so high. Wow. Anyway, I wow. did. And so, and I interviewed the Smith family. The, the current Smith family. The current Smith family. It was Levi and Sybil Smith the three sons of Charles Smith, Levi, but they were so helpful in Dot Smith, Hannah. Wow. They were still living. Wow. See, it was 19, in the end of the 1990s. Wow. They were still living and they found, oh, they found letters. Oh, I mean, it was. Now, one of the, <clears throat> the interesting things about all this is that they deeded the land that's Battery Park. Yes. That wouldn't be Battery Park today if it, it wasn't would not. for that. That's where their glass company was. In 1827, all the cantonments, all the tenements where the soldiers had lived right. During was the war where of 1812. they, yes, from right. the War of 1812. And the, and the people, the glass company had used some of it probably for their, I don't know, but they, they that was housing. Housing was, right. they had to bring the, the skilled glass blowers from Boston because a Boston glass blowing superintendent had brought all the, had brought the money and the skilled glass blowers to Burlington, a law, and and got uh, Peck and Dean and some of the investors in Burlington. What kind of glass did they make? They made window glass by the cylinder method, and um, uh, 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 the cylinder method. Is, nobody knows about it. I know that. I didn't know it either. But you um, uh, you you have to you know get up to like two thousand degrees. I mean, think about the wood. Mm -hmm. The blowing, the sand, the silica, the potash, the pots they had to make, the horses they had to have to deliver this stuff, the boxes they had to make. I mean, it's astounding what had to go into it. Yeah. Anyway, the glass floors would be called when the, when, the, when the furnace was at a certain temperature. That's why they had to live nearby. Mm -hmm. And then they would, can you imagine these big strong sweaty men blowing these glass cylinders blowing them blowing them blowing them getting bigger 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 and then they had to take them down cut them and flatten them wow amazing well anyway that's very good and there were fires and there was competition and there was everything else but anyway i was fascinated right okay so we're needing to end soon. It's been a wonderful celebration of your life. Any parting words that you want to leave the audience uh, quote from somebody or your own personal um, philosophy on life that mm -hmm. you would like to share? Thank you. Um, well, I guess don't be afraid of change is one thing I've found out. Um, and then I also have been shown that I find what I need. Mm. I don't even know sometimes what it's going to be. Mm. I listen to my gut or I follow mm. what I feel is right and it turns out all right. I open up a little space and something comes in to fill it. Um, I don't know what else. Uh, oh, listen to young people. Mm. I've, I've, I really, really, really have learned that in the last couple of years. My daughter Elizabeth came to live with me last year with her husband, hoping to relocate to Burlington. Uh -huh. He's re just retired. They lived in Hailing. And um, she got so, she's, a, she's a, a community activist and a democracy enhancer. She's so worried about our country and she's doing something about it. Uh -huh. And she got into working with a whole new group of people that I, we're off my radar. Mm -hmm. And the ideas and the thoughts and the experiences they're having, not sometimes real struggles, but they see the future. Yep. They see the future yep. and they want to move there. And as Elizabeth says, don't hold us back too much. Mm. It's wonderful. 
And that's wonderful. I'm taking that to heart, Absolutely. and I'm trying to say, well, I've got something that I've learned too. Yeah, a little mix up. But I see what she's saying. It's a whole new world, and I'm. I feel good about that, I, and I feel confident and just super about the young people in Burlington that are feeding people, caring for people, getting involved in politics. Mm -hmm. That's a, been a big joy great, to me. Great prescription for life. Thank you so much for being here today. <laughs> well, thank you for inviting me. And You're welcome. We go forward. <laughs> That's right. <fair. laughs> All right.